It's now been a few days since Starship integrated Flight Test 5, and SpaceX just released ground footage of the ship's landing. Well, not very long. For the first time since some of the original Starship upper stage flight tests, we got a view of the belly flop, flip, and splash down in the ocean. With this, we get a much better idea of the accuracy of the landing, along with how it performed and held up after Earth re-entry. Here I'll go more in depth into the new footage, possible plans to catch the upper stage as soon as early next year, what to expect in the future, and more. Only a few hours ago, SpaceX released a 21 second video from a camera on a buoy out in the Indian Ocean. In addition to the footage, they tweeted saying, Starship flip maneuver and landing burn on its fifth flight test. Vehicle improvements ensured flaps were protected from high heating, resulting in a controlled entry and high accuracy splashdown at the targeted area in the Indian Ocean. Focusing more on the footage, it starts right at engine ignition. At this point, Starship is still horizontal and in its belly flop position. Seconds after ignition, the bottom of the ship swings toward the camera before correcting itself and orienting vertically. From here, it continues to slowly lower toward the water. The thrust of the engines creates massive plumes of vapor and steam as it shoots water in every direction. Even still, you can clearly see the engines firing and slowly getting closer and closer to the surface of the water. Finally, it makes contact with the ocean and any light or fire gets extinguished by the water. This is where the video that the company just released ends. However, if we pair it with the actual flight test footage, we get a few more seconds of the landing and its aftermath. Here, we see all the light go out, but then when it cuts to the buoy camera, we see one explosion and part of the upper stage bobbing in the ocean with a fire going. This would continue for another 20 seconds or so before going out. Even with this new footage and additional angles, it's hard to get a good idea of exactly what the upper stage is doing. For a better perspective, we can look at footage from Starship's SN10 high altitude flight test, which took place years ago in early 2021. For that test, SpaceX launched just the Starship upper stage using three Raptor engines with the intention of completing a landing burn and soft touchdown. During that test, you can see the upper stage cut off its engines and begin to fall in what they call the belly flop position. One of the biggest benefits of this maneuver is the fact that it helps slow the stage significantly, using the entire upper stage like an air brake. From there, it continued to fall until what seemed like the last seconds where they ignited the three Raptor engines. Immediately after, the bottom of the stage swings to the other side before correcting itself and slowly lowering over the next tens of meters before a landing. It's also worth noting that the SN10 flight test was by no means perfect and had a bit of a harder landing than future high altitude flight tests. Looking back at the footage SpaceX just released, it looks like basically a perfect landing. The flip occurs and the stage touches down just about 20 seconds later in a controlled manner. Pairing this footage with the onboard camera also gives us a better idea of the landing. A bit past an hour into the launch, Starship was just about at the end of the main re-entry process and had gotten past some of the hottest parts. We saw some burn through on one of the flaps, but unlike Flight 4, the heat shield was strong enough to keep the flap fully intact. At T plus 1 hour, 2 minutes and 50 seconds, Starship is still coming in at about a 45 degree angle as represented by the graphic at the bottom. 40 seconds later, flight controllers called out that Starship was now in the subsonic belly flop position. With this, we could see the flaps moving and the speed rapidly decreasing. At T plus 1 hour, 3 minutes and 30 seconds, Starship was falling at about 730 kilometers an hour, still 15 kilometers high. Over the next minute and a half, this managed to drop to around 350 kilometers an hour and only 1 kilometer high. Keep in mind that was just from the belly flop position. Finally, at T plus 1 hour, 5 minutes and 23 seconds, they call out landing burn startup and we see a bright light from engine ignition. Instantly, the ship swings to the opposite side and soon corrects to a vertical position as seen in the buoy footage. Its final bit of speed is also burned off quickly thanks to the raptors. An onboard camera shows the water below before the stage makes contact with the ocean. Using the official live stream, the time between engine ignition and splashdown is just about 20 seconds, which matches up perfectly with the video SpaceX just released. Everything considered, one thing we can likely confirm based on the buoy angle is that Starship landed right where SpaceX was aiming. On Flight 4, a very similar sequence took place where days later, SpaceX released a new camera angle from a buoy showing the landing burn and splashdown that time of the booster. In that instance, the company would eventually go on to confirm that it had landed exactly where they intended it to with a very small margin. It's possible something similar was done with the upper stage. As far as why this is important, SpaceX has even more ambitious plans for the future. Only days ago, when responding to a tweet talking about catching the booster, Musk said, hopefully early next year we will catch the ship too. With it already being mid-October, early next year is not far away at all, and highlight some of the ambitious plans we can expect to see sometime in the future. In order for that to be possible, it would be much easier if both launch towers were active, as in theory, the booster would be taking up one of the landing spots. Granted, a lot of this is speculation, but catching the ship as well will be another challenge. 
The ship would likely orbit Earth multiple times after launch, which would give SpaceX time to prepare for re-entry and catch back at the launch site. While very ambitious, after watching the catch of Super Heavy, catching the ship doesn't seem too far-fetched. For the past few months, SpaceX has been working hard to improve the heat shield of the upper stage. Even leading up to the most recent flight, the company was quoted saying, one of the key upgrades on Starship ahead of flight was a complete rework of its heat shield, with SpaceX technicians spending more than 12,000 hours replacing the entire thermal protection system with newer generation tiles, a backup ablative layer, and additional protections between the flap structures. This massive effort, along with the updates to the ship's operations and software for re-entry and landing burn, will look to improve upon the previous flight and bring Starship to a soft splashdown at the target area in the Indian Ocean, they said. This definitely worked, but SpaceX is not done tweaking and upgrading the system. Back in June, Musk tweeted saying, Note, a newer version of Starship has the forward flap shifted leeward. This will help improve reliability, ease of manufacturing, and payload to orbit. In addition, he's expressed multiple times the challenges that come with creating heat shields. After the results of Flight 4, he said, We're going to replace the whole heat shield on the ship. So the new heat shield tile is about twice as strong as the ones that were on the last flight. We want to put an ablative secondary structure, basically a blade of protection, behind the tiles so that if a tile cracks or comes loose, it doesn't cook the rocket. In a different quote, when talking about the addition of the ablative material, he said, It's not good for reuse, but it's good for saving your butt if a tile cracks or falls off. It's very tricky to put these tiles and have them work well because the tiles are ceramics. They're like a coffee cup or a dinner plate. So you have a whole bunch of dinner plates on a rocket that is shaking. It's shrinking cryogenically with the propellant and then expanding under pressure, and then the tiles are expanding when they get hot. So there's a lot of expansion and contraction happening while trying to keep all these brittle tiles from cracking or breaking off, he said. He went on to talk about the challenges of making a reusable orbital heat shield, citing the space shuttle taking months of work between flights to fix and repair its heat shield. What's clear from these comments is that there still is work to do with the main heat shield tiles themselves as far as keeping all of them secure and in one piece throughout the entire launch process. This being said, the new ablative material in combination with the rocket's steel construction has proved to definitely be effective. The goal for Starship is rapid reuse. This obviously would not be possible if after each landing, the rocket needs repairs to the underlying ablative material and also adding back tiles that went missing. Fortunately for SpaceX, they're making fast progress and improving. Something to look forward to in the future. After a few days, SpaceX finally released a longer video from the buoy out in the Indian Ocean. This gave us a much better perspective of the ship completing its landing burn and splashing down in the water. With this complete, the company now has its sights set on catching the ship. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.